It's Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us, third, fourth, and fifth graders. We are back with another great day of English language arts. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we do vocabulary. So we learn new words for our listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do word study. Word study helps us with our spelling, but it also helps us understand how words are made in English. We've got a lot of great activities for you today, but let's start with word study. What is word study? Just to remind you, it's learning about words and finding patterns in the words that we read, hear, and spell. That word patterns is so important in word study. Some words we just have to memorize, but most words have patterns in them. And that's what we're gonna be studying today. Today, we're gonna to be looking for patterns in closed syllables. That sounds very fancy. Don't worry, I'll help you out. Today, we are going to listen and look for the patterns that make closed syllables. Syllables, syllables, syllables. Sometimes your teacher may ask you to clap out a word like beautiful, beautiful. My students know we like to put our hand below our chin Every time our chin drops, that is a syllable. So if I want to say beautiful, I'll put my hand below my chin and say beautiful. My chin dropped three times, so there are three syllables in that word. What about the word little? Put your hand below your chin. Little. Two syllables. What about the word information? In-for-me-shun. Four syllables. So when I say syllables, that means word parts. Longer words are made of smaller parts or syllables. Today, we are going to be studying closed syllables. It's a little tricky to think about. So let's practice with some examples. These vowels are closed. So in these words that I have here, the vowels are closed. The syllables are closed, meaning the vowel sound is short. All right, let's look at this first word in the list. Got. 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 That is called a closed syllable because the vowel is short. Short vowels, a, e, e, a, a, g, a, t. That is a short vowel, so it's a closed syllable. Shut, sh, a, t. That is a short vowel, the u. Uh, uh, uh. T. So it is a closed syllable. Tap. T. A. P. There is a short vowel, so it is a closed syllable. Hem. H. E. M. Short vowel means closed syllable. Let's keep practicing. These vowels are open, meaning the vowel sound is long. These are open syllables. Let's see if you can hear. Look at the first word in my list. Go. The vowel sound just keeps on going. Go. Because that long vowel sound, oh, can continue flowing. 
G O. Go has an open syllable. It means it has a long vowel sound. The word hi. I. Hi. The vowel is long. I can hear the I sound. The vowel keeps going, so it's an open syllable. Me. Mm. E. That vowel sound just keeps on going, so it's an open syllable. If you have long vowel sounds, it's an open syllable. Oh, when you are sick, you have the flu. Ooh, flu has an open syllable as well. These short words are not very tricky to spell. It's important to hear the syllables when you're spelling longer words, like information. There are many syllables in that word, and some have closed and open syllables. That is a really fancy way of saying, listen to the vowels. Are they short or are they long? Let's keep going. This word, got, g -a -t. A is a short vowel sound. Short vowels means they are closed. Another way to think about this, the consonant at the end, the T, almost closes in the vowel and protects it, makes it stay a short vowel sound. G -a -t. Short O, closed syllable. The word go. The long O sound just keeps on going. Long O, open syllable. Listen to the sounds that the vowels are making. Met. M, E, T. E, E. The E is making a short E sound. That consonant at the end is closing up the sound. Short E, closed syllable. That's our focus today. We're trying to listen for those short vowel sounds, especially in longer words. Me, the two sounds I hear are hmm, E. That is a long E sound, so it's called an open syllable. The main thing I want you to hear today and see the patterns in, in today, short vowel sounds make closed syllables. Short vowel sounds make closed syllables. Let's take the word kitten. How many syllables are in the word kitten? Kit ten. Kit ten. I hear two syllables. So here's a trick. Double consonants we split. Do you see how there are two T's or double T's? That's where we're going to break up our consonants. There's a slash, kit, ten. Now, look at the vowels made in each syllable. K, I, T, short I, T, E, N, short E. There are two closed syllables in this word. Kit, ten. If I close the... If I separated the syllables here, it'd be, oops, sorry about that. It'd be chitin. Let me close that down. We want it to be kitten. In order to have that I sound, there must be a consonant right next to the vowel. Kit, ten. 
Sometimes we don't hear the first T, but it's there to protect the vowel sound. Now, in kitten, we had double T's. In this word, cobweb, we still have two consonants, but they are not double. They're two consonants. Cobweb, cob, web. I hear two syllables. We're going to separate the syllables between the B and the W. Cob. Web. Listen to the vowel sounds. K, ah, that's a short O. Now let's look in web. W, e, b, e, e, e. That's a short E sound. Cob, web. These are both closed syllables, meaning they have short vowels. If you hear a short vowel in a long word, there must be a consonant right next to it. Those consonants protect those short vowel sounds. I have a list of words that have double. Double means two of the same, kind of like twins. Double consonants. Happen, muffin, Tennis, wedding. We're going to separate the syllables between the double. Hap, pen. Muff, fin. Ten, miss. Wed, ding. I hear short vowels. Short vowels mean there must be consonants right after them. Now, this is a list of double consonants. This is a list of two consonants, meaning they are not the same letter twice. Let's look at this word, laptop. The P and the T are consonants. There are two of them. La, a, a, short A. Ta, a, a, short O. We hear those short vowel sounds because there are consonants right after them. How about this word cactus? Cactus. Two syllables. In the first syllable, k -a -k. I hear that short A sound, which means there has to be a consonant right after the vowel. Tus. T -a -s. I hear that short U sound as well. Napkin, admit. I must admit, this is a little tricky. Listen for the short vowel sounds. To help us with the short vowel sounds, we're going to categorize into double consonants and two consonants. I have a list of words at the top, and I need to sort them or categorize them into words with a double consonant in the center of the word or two consonants in the center of the word. Look at the word jelly. I see two L's, like twin L's. That is a double consonant. Jelly. Tennis. I see twin ends or double ends. Upset. P, S. Those are both consonants, but they are not doubles. That's a two consonant word. Basket, basket. Two consonants. Happen. I see the twin P's. Helmet. Trumpet. Little. I see the twin T's in the middle or the doubles. And shopping. I see the two P's. To practice word study at home, 
open a book, a magazine, or find a sheet of paper with a lot of words on it. Look for words that have double consonants, I made a little mistake there, that have double consonants or two consonants in the middle of the word. On a sheet of paper, categorize your findings. Make one column about double consonants, two L's, two T's, two M's. Find words with double consonants. In the next column, find words with two consonants in the middle of the word that are not double, like basket, upset. There are many different words to study. On Thursday, we're going to continue this lesson because it's a little tricky, but the whole point is to understand that longer words are made of smaller word parts. The vowels are really important to pay attention to in those smaller word parts. There are rules, and the more we practice them, the easier our spelling will be. Thank you so much, and in just a few minutes, we are going to transition. Well, it won't look like a few minutes to you, but we'll transition so we have our reading and writing lessons. Stick with us. Welcome, learners. It's Mrs. Craft, and I am back. I've joined Miss Abby on stage so that we can talk about continuing the learning that we did yesterday. If you recall, we learned two new vocabulary words yesterday, and they had to do with the reading that we read about a mystery. Definitely. And so the two words, let's work on our signals for those words, because remember we learned those yesterday. I think it helps remember. In addition, those words are really important for what we're going to read today. Yes. And write. So our words were evidence. And do you remember our signal for evidence? So I have a magnifying glass. And you can pretend to have one, but we went evidence. Yes. Like you're holding your magnifying glass because you're looking for the truth, right? You're looking for those facts. Facts are really important. Yeah. Right? Evidence is what you can see, hear, smell, sometimes even taste. So evidence is right in front of you. That's right, Miss Abby. And for our evidence, we always want to make sure we have our little eyeball icon because that helps us see and know that it's the truth. The other word that we looked at yesterday was a kind of a fun one to say, and it is alibi. Do you remember when you have an alibi, it means that you have a, a story, a story or a reason that you didn't do something, yeah. right? If your mom says, did you break this cup? No, I wasn't even home. I was playing at the neighbor's house. That is an alibi. That's an alibi. So alibi is going to put a smile on our face because we know we're not guilty of whatever happened. So let's do alibi. Alibi. Do that with me. Alibi. All right. So our two words, which are pretty cool words and really important. So we're going to continue today on about reading a mystery. And we're reading it because we love mysteries, right? Mysteries are fun. so fun. But we are also reading them to look for those important things that we need to see, those facts, and how we can separate the fact from the opinion. Definitely. So let's take a look and review really quickly our essential question. So Miss Abby's over here showing you our essential question. And remember, that's how we're going to use words to express our opinion. And so Miss Abby's going to work with you later on writing and how you can develop that. Yeah. But we're and when we're discussing something, you may have gotten in an argument with someone where you have an opinion and they have a different opinion. Right. Yes, we can get mean to each other, but that's not very civil. We want to be nice to each other and use learn how to use words to express our opinions and maybe even help each other grow our brains and open our brains to other ideas. That's a fabulous thought, Miss Abby, because we do want to be able to weigh other people's opinions mm -hmm. exactly without getting to a shouting match or raising our voices. 
but so in a very level-headed way. Definitely, and I hear this in classrooms. Students are able to learn how to express their opinions very respectfully, and that's kind of what we're doing today. I agree, that's a good learner. That's a thoughtful person that does that, right? Definitely. So we're teaching you to be thoughtful learners. All yeah. right, so today we are going to discover another mystery, and it's gonna to relate to the picture that we have back on the board. Today we only have one picture. So we're gonna to flip to our reading and then we'll come back and examine the evidence. There's a lot yeah. going on evidence. in this illustration. Yes, For so sure. you're going to read us a story. This is a fictitious story. It is fake, it is a fake mystery, but it's helping us develop those opinion skills. Exactly, just kind of like we did yesterday. Just to remind you, if you missed our mystery yesterday, you can find that on the YouTube channel. Definitely. So have some fun with that. Let's get started on our mystery for today. And this one is taken from the same book that we used yesterday, and it is called Crime and Puzzlement. It is written by Lawrence Treat, illustrated by Liz Leslie Kabarga, and it's published by David Godine Publishers. So this is called A Matter of Diamonds. Mrs. Diana Dog, Dr. C.D. Spaniel, and Owen Weimaraner were having tea on the dog patio and examining some diamonds that Mr. Weimaraner was showing in the hope of selling. The diamonds were on the small, dark platter near the center of the table. Do you see the diamonds? I see a small, dark platter on the table. But there are no diamonds. There are no diamonds. When someone inside the house yelled, fire, and the three fled the patio, the fire, which had been set, damaged a curtain, but was easily extinguished, and it was not determined who had given the alarm. When the trio returned, the diamonds were gone. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Wilbur Unisex, who had been chasing butterflies, came upon the scene as shown. He questioned the trio and all of them gave similar answers to the effect that at the alarm, they had jumped up and run into the house and no one had noticed what the others did. From a study of the scene, Wilbur guessed who had stolen the diamonds. And he was right, of course, he always is. So remember yesterday, we looked at some questions that we wanted to work through an answer that's gonna help us get to who our done opinion. it. Our opinion, yes. yes. And so we took a look at our high five poster yesterday, and that helped us sort of review who, what, when and where, how, and why. So what we wanna do, Ms. Abby, is kind of go through and see which ones we can answer before we start to form our opinion. Definitely, there's a lot of information. And when we're dealing with a mystery, a theft, we have suspects. So starting with the first sentence, I see that there are three suspects, three people who may have stolen the diamonds. So for the who, these names are a little interesting. We have Diana dog, but it's not spelled like a regular dog. We also, that's a who, a suspect. We also have Dr. C.D. Spaniel. And then we have Owen Weimaraner. And I am writing these as Miss Abby puts them up on our high five chart. Go ahead and feel free to write them down at home. If you have post-its, great. 
But if you don't, go ahead and write them in your writing journal. So we'll come back and revisit those as we answer the questions. So we had three people sitting together drinking tea. Someone was trying to sell diamonds. So I may have to reread to see. They were examining some diamonds that Mr. Weimariner was showing in the hope of selling. Okay. So they were Weimariners. That is a tricky word. Weimariners. And that's a type of dog. These are all kind of types of dogs. They are. Yes. Weimariner. Yep. A spaniel. A Weimariner. And just a, a dog. So Mr. Weimariner's diamonds were taken. That is the what. Who took Mr. Weimariner's diamonds? When we look at your high five poster, we also have to understand when and where. Sometimes we have the time. Sometimes we have the place. And flipping back to our, our review from last week, that's our setting. Remember that word, setting? Definitely. So maybe I should reread again, Miss Abby? That's a great idea. There are so many characters in this mystery. I'm a little confused about where they are. Some of you at home may say, I know exactly where they are. Right. Let's listen again just to confirm. Sure. So we have our three characters, our three dog characters. Mrs. Diana Dog, Dr. C.D. Spaniel, and Owen Weimaraner. They were having tea on the dog patio. There's our where, so at, our, at the dog house. Ha oh. <laughs> ha, did you get that one? The dog, dog house. house. So on the dog patio, and examining some diamonds that Mr. Weimaraner was showing in the hope of selling. So Mr. Weimaraner brought his diamonds to Mrs. Dog's house, and they were having lunch on the patio. So I will stop you because I do have, I'm going to put my what in blue because evidence is blue. The diamonds are gone, so I rewrote it in blue, but now I know when. It was at lunchtime. They were having lunch, so lunchtime, and on Mrs. Dog's patio right? at the dog's house. At the dog's house. That's funny. <laughs> Dog's house. Okay, this helps me. Once I understand what's happening, when and where, then I can go deeper into who may have done it. That's right. That's is right. there any more evidence that you feel is important or should we go to the illustration? Well, let's go to the illustration. Um, but to remember, someone inside the house that means we have another person, unnamed, who yelled, fire. Isn't this Mrs. Dog's house? It is. So wouldn't she most likely know the person in the house? I don't know. I'm starting to come up with how and why. My brain is starting to come up with ideas, but I think I need more evidence before I say, Miss Diana Dog did it. I think I need a little bit more. Let's go back and look at the picture because you know that yesterday that helped us sort of really think through the facts that we have. So a piece of evidence that I saw quickly was a DD on a napkin, but it almost looks, I've seen it before where someone sews letters. An or embroidered napkin. Embroidered napkin. So maybe they just belong to her. I'm thinking so because I see a DD on this one, although they're a little bit different. Yeah, Thank one you. looks in cursive and one looks. So is that where Miss Diana Dog was sitting? We don't know. And I do notice that we have an A, a B, and a C. Oh, so position A, position B, position C. I notice a teapot is tipped over with a lot of tea in it because it's not tipped over very much and it's leaking. So maybe they haven't even gotten to drinking the tea yet. That's a very good, and we have some cookies, which to me would say it's 
after lunch. Oh, gotcha. Maybe it's dessert time. Because it was lunch time, and but they haven't eaten all the cookies, and that's the first thing I would do. So it happened right after lunch before tea and cookies. Oh, it did say that Mr. Weimariner was selling the diamonds and the case, the black uh, platter. So are these, is this where Mr. Weimariner was sitting because the case is next to him? That's, that would be a, a good clue that I think is important. Um, we have a book here though also. Oh, I see an RX. On it. Right. It's very small, here but it RX is. means prescription it and does. doctors write prescriptions. So our doctor is Dr. Spaniel. Dr. That might help give us a clue about who sat here, which leaves Miss Dog as sitting here, which makes sense to me that she is close to the door of her house. Hmm. Oh, so she can go in and so get more things for her service. guests. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think you're right. Mr. Weimariner is here. The doctor is here. And the homeowner, Mrs. Dog, is right here. This still doesn't help me. <laughs> so I've got a list of questions. Let's go back and sort of take a look at things we could think about as we try to solve this mystery and come up with the facts. So we have, where did Mrs. Dog sit? I think she's that closest to the house. Where did the doctor sit? Uh, to her left. And I believe this should be Weimaraner. Where does yes. Weimaraner sit? <laughs> well, Rottweiler's also a type of dog, <laughs> but yes. And I think Mr. Weimaraner, the person who had the diamonds, was sitting opposite Miss Dog. Here's the curious question. Was the doctor nervous? Was he nervous? I have no idea. Or How she, would you know? She. Does Mrs. Dog's wealth eliminate her as a suspect? She does look wealthy, doesn't she? Look at this beautiful patio. Oh, look at the, the pretty pillars on the home. So, well, it asked if the doctor was nervous and it looks as if a prescription has been crinkled up, but I also see $55,000. Wow, that's more than our necklace from last from yesterday, yesterday. exactly. Yes. So it's almost like the doctor made a mistake the first time so maybe the doctor was nervous. What else might point to that? Had all three people left the table after making similar movements? That's a good question. Look at the position of the chairs. It's almost like they stood up and their chairs they were fell. in a rush. They were definitely in a rush on this one because they're all knocked over and either laying on the ground. So that means perhaps Mrs. Dog did not know who said the, who yelled fire. I am stumped. Unless she was hiding it. And had, who most likely stole the diamonds? All right, so looking at the evidence, we understand, well, we think, we understand where the characters sat. We understand this is Miss Dog's home. Mm -hmm. We understand that Mr. Weimariner had the diamonds and the doctor is appearing a little nervous as if he's making mistakes. So that would lead me to think that the doctor perhaps took his own diamonds, but then that... Oh, the doctor did not have diamonds. Oh, right. See, we're that trying to get our... Dr. Spaniel, yes. yes, yes. So this is right. Dr. Spaniel, and this is Mr. Weimariner the owner of the diamonds, mm -hmm. the one who's trying to sell them. Exactly, and then the owner of the home, Miss Dog, who had the fire set inside her home. Well, I think Mrs. Dog has reasons to take the diamonds. I think that having such an extravagant home, such a fancy home, may mean that she needs to steal diamonds in order to keep up her fancy lifestyle. The 
doctor may also have reasons. For some reason, he may be extra nervous, maybe because he needs more money, so he may want to steal the diamonds as well. I don't see why Doc or Mr. Spaniel would steal the diamonds because he already had them. That's true, and I agree with you. Um, and so think about the evidence that we're seeing, mm -hmm. right? So the evidence that Miss Abby has pointed out is pretty significant um, towards the person that was maybe the most nervous. So you think the doctor may have stolen I the diamonds? I do. Did you guys come up with a, a thought on that? I'm torn. I'm torn between the doctor and Miss Stoke. So Miss Stoke, the reasons are opinions, and those are more of an opinion, right? We don't have anything to tell us that those are facts. True. So our opinion would be maybe she needs some money to keep her, her fancy lifestyle. Yeah, it, opinions and reasons can get very close. But I need to write about this. I need to decide who stole the diamonds, and then I need to include evidence and reasons. So. You know, and Miss Abby, it might help us to just take a, just a moment and go back and look at some of the questions. Yeah, when you feel you don't have enough evidence, right. reread or re-examine for more evidence. And figure out which details are important and those that you might just be leading you down the wrong path. That happens. I can be dead wrong sometimes. So, we looked at where did Mrs. Dog sit? A, B, or C? And we were thinking she sat at C. Where did the doctor sit? We know that. We, we're pretty sure we have a fact on where the doctor sat because we have the prescription pad. Was the doctor nervous? Mm, we don't know. He was Seems crumbling like things. Yes. Oh, do you think the diamonds blew away? No. It did not look windy because things were still on the table. Well, and the flag is there. not flying. Good point, Miss Savvy. Um, I don't see evidence of wind, and diamonds are fairly heavy. I don't think they would blow away. I agree with that. Does Mrs. Dog's wealth eliminate her as a suspect? So we've talked about that. So does that mean if someone has a lot of money that they don't steal? I don't think so. Unfortunately, I think we have to say no. Yeah. Had all three people left the table after making similar movements? And we agreed with that question. And who stole the diamonds? Huh. I think this is going to be a very interesting opinion writing piece. Definitely. Did you come up with an opinion? Is it based on evidence and reasons? So now my task is to choose. Did Diana Dog steal the diamonds? Dr. C.D. Spaniel? Or did Mr. Weimaraner, the owner of the diamonds, steal his own? I think it's Diana Dog. I think Diana Dog, the homeowner, took Mr. Weimaraner's diamonds at her own house. I'm going to need to write to explain why. Awesome. All righty. So, friends, please make sure you have your writer's notebooks out. And it's very possible that you disagree with my opinion. Absolutely. That definitely happens. But what I want you to do is practice strengthening your opinion by using expressive language. So right here, I have my writer's notebook. And I'm going to go to a fresh page. Now, I always like to organize my thoughts. My opinion is that Diana Dog did it. This is my opinion. My opinion by itself is what we call weak. It's not very strong. 
So I need to use reasons, that's my thinking, and evidence to support it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was a little stumped. So I'm going to look back at the photo, at the illustration, and I'm going to have to help you understand how do we do this. So on my blue sticky notes, they don't look very blue. These are my pieces of evidence that I think are really important. So yes, Weimaraner's uh, diamonds were stolen. But also, I think that it's important to bring up that they were at her house. At my house, I know all of the best hiding places. If I have friends coming over, I know where to put things. And they said that the diamonds were missing. No one had them. I think that because they were at her house, she was able to easily hide the diamonds. Do I know that she easily hid the diamonds? No. That's the thing about reasoning. We don't have answers. I'm just trying to connect my opinion with the evidence. Now, Diana Dog owns the dog house. I think that because she owns the dog house, her home, that's true. It is her home. Because she owns it, She'll need money to pay for it. So do I know that she needs money? I don't know that. That's called my reasoning. Your reasons cannot be proven. You just have to explain them. So I'm explaining my reasons of why this evidence is important. Because it's her house, Someone yelled fire. Now it's true that someone yelled fire. They did not see the person, but they heard it. That's evidence. Someone yelled fire, but I'm thinking, this is my reasoning, it's her home, it's her nice home. Maybe she had someone who worked for her set a quick fire and yell fire to distract everyone. Do I know if this is true? No. I'm using my thinking skills. That's called reasoning. These are my reasons why I think this evidence is important. So someone yelled fire. I think it was someone who worked for her. Now, friends, what I have here is a little bit of organization. My main opinion is that Diana Dog stole Mr. Weimaraner's diamonds. That is my opinion. So you might say, well, then prove it. Okay. I'm gonna use evidence and reasons to prove my opinion. Reason one, or evidence number one, it was her home, therefore she can easily hide the diamonds. Reason two is also that it's her home and to maintain such a fancy home, you'll need a lot of money. Diamonds make money. Lastly, someone yelled fire. I think it was someone who worked for her because who else would have been in her home? So each of these will be separate paragraphs. This is my main opinion. 
This could be my next paragraph, another paragraph, and my third paragraph. Then I can end with a conclusion. So when you have multiple paragraphs, you want to put linking words between them. I will say between these two, I'll put the word additionally. Addition means to add on. And additionally means I'm adding on another piece of evidence. This is my last piece of evidence here. And usually you put your most important evidence at the end. So I will say most importantly. Most importantly will go between those paragraphs. When I taught you narratives last week and the week before, I like to organize first and show what words will I place between the paragraphs that I write. Once I have a plan, I'm going to turn it into writing. Now, I want people to agree with me. So I have to use very convincing language to express my opinion. So this has to sound very serious. I'm going to start with the time. Yesterday. Yesterday at lunchtime, a crime was committed. I like to ask questions in my introduction. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. Was it murder? Question mark. No. Was it theft? Question mark. Yes. Diamonds. were stolen, comma, but the question, but the real question is by whom? Now I'm going to write my opinion sentence. It has to be very strong. I am unshakable in my opinion. Opinion that Mrs. Diana Dog stole. Mr. Weimarainer's diamonds. And I'll end with an exclamation mark. Then I'll give a little tease. If you don't believe me, comma, then believe the evidence. So friends, looking back at my planning document, I gave my opinion. I said that Diana Dog stole Mr. Weimarainer's diamonds. Check, check. Now that I've planned it, I need to set the scene. We are at her house, and then I need to give my reasoning. So my next paragraph 
we'll talk about these two pieces, my evidence and my reasons. For my first piece of evidence, I need a new page. It is crucial that you understand where the crime took place. The crime occurred on Mrs. Dog's patio comma, of her own home, comma, of the place where she knows all of the best hiding places. I think she took the diamonds and quickly hid them. where no one would find them. Where no one but her would find them. So going back to my planning document, I said, I think Diana Dog stole the diamonds, Mr. Weimariner's diamonds. My first piece of evidence is because it's at her house. We are not arguing. This happened at her house. But my reason, my thinking, is because it's her house, she knows where to hide them. So she could easily hide the diamonds. I don't know that she hid the diamonds, but I'm thinking in your house, you know the best place to hide diamonds. As I go forward in my writing, my next is going to say, because her home is, she has a rich house, an extravagant home. Because she has an extravagant home, she's going to need money. Fancy homes need lots of money to keep them fancy. So she needed diamonds, lots of diamonds to sell to keep her home fancy. That's my second. I have my evidence and my reasons. Lastly, my last piece of evidence, my most important piece of evidence is that someone from inside the home yelled fire. I think she must have known who was inside the home and she planned it. She planned someone to yell fire so that she could grab the diamonds, easily hide them, turn them into money, and keep living her wealthy life. Even though I don't have time to finish my writing, I hope just by looking at my planning document and then seeing how I started writing my opinion piece, you can see how you can turn your ideas into multiple paragraphs as well. Friends, at home, maybe there's a mystery Something is broken. Something is missing. How might you use some of these tips you learned today to also share your opinion? We would love to see what are you writing at home? Did you write about this diamond mystery? Share it with us. We have resources and we can't wait to see what you create. Tomorrow, we will have more opinion writing and we'll have more English language arts. 
Thank you so much for joining Mrs. Craft and me for At Home with APS. See you tomorrow. <laughs>